Hi there, my front-end friends. Have you ever had a color in CSS that you needed either a slightly lighter or darker version of, but you had the hex code and converting hex codes can be kind of annoying. So then you have to go and switch it over to HSL, which makes it a little bit easier because you can play with the lightness, but a little bit extra work than maybe you might need to do because now we have color mix that is here and part of CSS. It's now supported in all the modern browsers. Everybody has it. Of course, that doesn't mean that the older browsers have it. So we'll talk a bit more about browser support a little bit later in this video. But for now, let's dive in and see what it's all about. So here is a simple code pen and all the code pens. There's a link that has a collection of all of them uh, down in the bottom if you want to play with any of these. Uh, but I just have, for now, three divs set up. So we're going to look at a few different examples here because it, it starts off really simple. And there's a lot of interesting and weird and cool stuff you can do with this. So starting with this, you can see I have the three divs, but we have two blank ones on, you know, the two ends here are, are, are empty. And so we can come on this first one here and let's go with a background color. And of course, how do you even like modify the purple keyword? Normally, you wouldn't be able to do much with that, but we can with color mix where I can come in and make changes to this color. So we can start off, and the first thing that's a bit weird here is you do have to say what color mode you're going to be changing it in. We'll talk more about this uh, in a little bit, but for now I'm just going to write in OK Lab, uh, and we'll sort of talk more about what that actually means a little bit later, but we're just going to sort of throw it in right now. And I'm going to say we're going to mix purple and white. Now we get a perfect mix of purple and white right there, and let's get a darker version over on this side, and I'll move myself just so you can see it a little bit better and you know let's copy this one here paste that one in and on this side we'll mix it with black and we get a darker version of it right there now i just use this purple keyword that's right here uh, but if you wanted to what we could do is you can do this in different ways so let's come in here with a root and i'm going to just create a base uh, custom property here and we'll put purple purple right here uh, just because it's going to help us sort of play around with things a little bit and i can replace all of these so we'll select all of them and we can replace them all with a bar of base just like that. So we'll use my purple still. So let's just come here and say it's going to be a lime green instead. So we have another color uh, and we'll see those colors come through mixing with white, the lime green itself, and then of course mixing with black on that side. Now right now what I've done is we've put in a base and we put in a white. So it's just taking 50% base and 50% white and it's mixing the two of them together. But you might want something that's a little bit more along the line. So here I've looked at an example where we're actually having 10 total divs or I think it's nine total divs. So we have the middle which is our purple once again. Uh, and then here we have on this side the mix to the lighter and on that side the mix to the darker. But what we can do with this is you can define percentages. So what we can do is we can actually say this is going to be 10% of my base color and the rest of it's going to be white. And then we can come on this one and say that one's going to be 30% of my base color mixed with the rest of it being white. So it's 70% white. This one could be 50% of my base color mixed with white. And then we could even say 70% of my base color and have the rest of it mixed with white. So we're sort of moving along on our way. And you'll notice here before I, you know, 50% is the default. So this one from we don't actually need to include it. Uh, we're just doing a mix of our base color with our white right there, but we can put the 50% if we want. And of course we can do the exact same thing down on this side, but with our blacks. So on this side, it's gonna be, uh, we'll start with our 70% of our color mixed with a bit of black, a 50% mixing with black, 30% mixed with black, and then a 10% mixed with black. And we start to get a little bit of a color scheme that's coming in, though you will see at the extreme levels we're getting really dark there. The difference between them isn't very much. There is a small little difference there, but we're getting like the 10 to the 30. It's not a lot, um, but we're going to see that there, there's some options there as well. Um, but a few things that I want to mention when you're putting in these percentages is you can actually do percentages. It, it, by default, it will try and be 100%. So this is defaulting to getting to 100 because we've only given it one. It just assumes black is the other 30%. Uh, let's go over to this first one just because it's going to be a little bit more obvious with the white. So we have 10% and then we have the rest being white. So what happens if I actually came here and I said this is, I don't know, 25% just so we can change or yeah, we'll do 20, we'll do 20%. And then I came on my white and I said, this is 100%. What's it, you know, how is it going to treat that? And it's just going to scale things down to get to 100% maximum because we cannot mix colors more than 100%. So it, it knows that it can't go past there. So, you know, there will be a slight difference between an 80 20 uh, just because we are saying the proportion of white is higher if this is at 100%, but it, it's going to scale things down to be a total of 100%. But another thing you could actually do is 20% and 20%. And what that's going to do is actually make it transparent. We're adding the alpha value in because we have a total of 40%. So this would be the same as a 50%, 50% mix, but with a 40% alpha value. So that could be an interesting way that if you need a transparent color, you could even bring that in. 
Um, and even, I guess we could just do a 0% here at the end. And, you know, I think it's a complicated way to add transparency to something, but it's an option there uh, where you could come in and actually, you know what? I haven't tried. What if we only did one color? It doesn't work. I didn't think so. Uh, we do need to have two values in there for it to be considered valid, but we're basically getting the, the purple uh, keyword here is at 20% alpha value um, by doing a 0% white. So I think in that case, it's probably, there's probably easier ways to work, but it could wait, it could be a way that if you're stuck with a hex value somewhere and you need to add transparency to it, I guess this could work. Now, one thing I did a little bit quickly, uh, and I said I was doing this fast, is talking about this OK Lab that's right here. And there's a lot of different color models in CSS now. Uh, there's the ones that you probably know. We have hex codes, which actually are RGB. So we have our sRGB is the color mode when we use RGB. We have HSL. Uh, we have now have LCH. We now have Lab. And with Lab, like I could actually switch this over to Lab. Uh, or I could switch this to LCH. And there's also hue, whiteness, blackness is another one. So we have all these different color modes. And you might be going, well, who cares? <laughs> why, why do I need to specify? And the reason we need to specify is when we're mixing them, it's going to change how these mixes happen depending on the color mode that you're using, which can seem a little bit weird, right? But you can see here at the OK Lab at the top, versus the OK LCH. And this LCH, when it's going to the whites, is actually getting really pink. Uh, and we're going to the darks, we're getting dark. It's a little bit different on the darks as well. Uh, the hue whiteness black, whiteness blackness, I think it is, is also doing something a little bit similar. sRGB is very similar to the OK Lab. There's going to be slight variations in that as well. So when you're mixing colors, um, defining which mode you're using can actually have a very big influence on what it looks like. So you might mix two colors and you chose OKLCH okay um, and you didn't really like that color. You could just switch it to OK Lab, and you might get a color that's closer to what you were trying to get to. The other thing in here is you might get different results with different colors. So if I came in here and I said red, we're going to see things are going to look a little bit different. But again, they're not going to match up. Or even here, the OK Lab and the OK LCH in the lighter ones look really similar compared to the purple where the OK Lab and the sRGB actually looked really similar. So the color that you choose is also going to have a big influence on how the colors are mixing. Uh, and I just want to throw that out. But there's even like this is the OK LCH is actually going much more into the ruby colors here versus the OK Lab, even though in the lighter colors, they look almost identical, if not exactly the same. So it does take a little bit of playing around with, but this is because the browser needs to know what it's going to be mixing. Uh, it needs to, it has these two different colors that can be in different color modes. I didn't really mention that, um, but we're mixing like red with white right now. But I could come in here and say my base is actually HSL and let's just choose like 200 and we'll do a 50% and do a 50% right there. And so now I'm actually mixing an HSL value. And if we come and take a look, I'm mixing it with the white keyword. Or let's come in with an RGB, RGB of 255, 255 just so we get to white, 255. So I'm mixing an HSL value with an RGB value. It, the browser needs to know how am I going to mix these two because we're working in two different color spaces. And you can see once again, we're getting wildly different results with the OK LCH and the hue whiteness blackness probably giving you things that you wouldn't expect to be seeing going into the purples. Now there's other ones than these ones. For me, the most consistent results though I have got is with OK Lab. That's why I started with OK Lab. I find it's just when I mix, it sort of gives you what you'd expect, which makes sense for getting lab values. Uh, I am using OK Lab, and you might be wondering what's OK Lab. <laughs> you might have heard of Lab, but not OK Lab. And just to show you, we might not even get it, but if I switch those over, you can see that actually the darker ones, if I go into the OK values, are darker than if I just did regular Lab. And both of them are there. We have Lab, and the same with LCH. You can just use LCH, and it's probably going to change what it looks like as well. Um, basically, the Lab and the LCH and the OK versions of both of them uh, were added basically at the same time. So browser support for them is more or less exactly the same. I think there's a slight variation. Um, but the reason we have the okay ones is there was some slight bugs in the algorithm for the these ones. Um, they're not perfect. I don't remember if it, I think it's in the darker colors actually, but I don't remember exactly. But there was a few little things that sort of don't work the way you'd expect them to work. So they added the okay versions of them, which are, it's a simpler algorithm from what I understand. And it tends to work better uh, for everything. So if you're going to use either lab or LCH, you probably want to throw the okay on the front of it. And if you're really not sure, go start with okay lab. For me, that's like easily the best one to start with. And then if you need variations from there, you could try playing around with some other stuff. But I find this is usually if we're using gradients now, because I'm going to make another video 
where I talk about some of the gradient stuff we can do, where we can actually choose the color mode we're making the gradient in, that's where these come more into play. With just color mix, I find most of the time, okay, lab is perfect. So you don't have to overthink it too much. And there's more than the ones I'm just showing here. This is sort of like the main ones that we're taking a look at right now. But if you do want to see more of them, I'll put a link down below. Uh, there's a few links actually to articles down below where that really helped me put this video together. So I definitely would recommend checking them out. One of them by Adam Argyle on the Google Chrome developers blog that is excellent. There's the MDM article as well. And again, if you want to play around with this as well, the links to these code pens are down below too. Let's get into another thing that's kind of weird <laughs> and took me, I was like, what's going on here? Um, but this is, you can actually specify the direction that the colors are being mixed in. You might be saying, what, what are you talking about, Kevin? So here I have a color one and a color two. I have a purple and a cyan, and I'm mixing them to get this color that's in the middle. And if we come and take a look, you can see that I'm actually doing something a little bit different here where I'm saying shorter hue. So we have our color mix. And actually, if we just did this in LCH, just because I decided to use LCH, uh, it's going to look exactly the same because shorter is going to be the default. So when I say shorter is the default, what are we talking about? Shorter, shorter, longer, anything like that. What is this? So if we look at a color wheel uh, and we're doing my sort of a purple into over here, if we're mixing the two of them, the shorter is going around the wheel the short way. So we're going from here over to here and we're sort of getting the middle value between there. If I said that it's 70% of this color and 30% of that, it's going to sort of be 70% of the way over this way. Or if I, you know, the other way around, I want 70% cyan, it means it's going 70% over this way instead. The one thing that's important here is this is only, this isn't available in every color model either. It's only available in the cylindrical color models. So like this is, if you're using HSL, we have the degrees zero to 360. We're going around a, a cylinder basically. Um, whereas if you're doing RGB, it's like this, where you have red on one axis, blue on the other and green on the other way. Lab is also another one where uh, it's more of a square on how it works with the three, the lightness and the A and the B, I don't really understand how lab works, but whatever. Um, I know it's the one for math purposes that is often used for color conversions. Um, it's sort of the middle ground if you're going between different um, different color models and stuff. But uh, yeah, this, this is like this cube. So because it's a cube with black would be like the far side that we can't see right now. Uh, we can't mix colors choosing longer or shorter because there's no long or short way with RGB. You're sort of just moving through that cube. Whereas with HSL, you can actually move around this a long or short way. So here, if I did longer and we have to write hue, uh, so the longer we're mixing it along the longer hue, it changes to this color and maybe going, okay, that's weird, right? But it's not because we were here. The other side is here. So we're mixing them and we're ending up sort of in this orangey realm over here, right? So we're we're finding we're going the long way around instead of the short way around. So we're getting the color that's on the opposite side, basically, of the color wheel between these two. So if you had like a yellow and a blue, depending on where they line up with each other, one of the ways might give you a purple color, but you're actually after the green. And that's more where this would actually be useful, in my opinion, where you were close enough, but maybe there was just a slight it's slightly shorter to go into the purples. So in that case, it would, you know, then you're going to say longer and then you get into the green instead. And instead of longer and shorter, you can also use, I can do uh, increasing is another keyword we can use there, or we can go in with decreasing as well. So in this case, it's not looking necessarily at the shorter or longer path, but are we going through increasing numbers or decreasing numbers? Though I, everything I've tried, uh, the shorter and decreasing are the same. So I just like using shorter because I understand it better. <laughs> but if anybody actually knows a little bit more about that and wants to leave a comment down below, go for it. Um, but yeah, it's just, is it the increasing hue or going through a decreasing hue, but the decreasing always seems to match the shorter as far as my experimentation with this. So that's uh, one thing we can throw in there. And just in case you're wondering, like I said, cylindrical, I passed over it a little bit quickly. Um, so basically the cylindrical color models, um, here I'm doing LCH. You can also use HSL and we can see that actually does make a, a difference in the color, uh, a very big difference actually in the color that we're getting um, right through that middle one. So again, changing this can give you wildly different results. Uh, you need to know if it's a cylindrical color model. It's one that uses uh, a degree as one of the units. So LCH has the H is the hue. We have HSL where we have the hue. And we also have hue, whiteness, blackness. Um, that is another cylindrical one as well. So as long as there's a hue that's defined in degrees, then you know it's cylindrical because you have the degrees where you're spinning around the circle. So a lot of cool, interesting, kind of weird things. And you might be wondering, like, what's the real practical use case for this? If you're just getting designs and copying and pasting hex codes in, you might not really be 
in love with this or seeing like, you know, what's, what's the point, but we can do some interesting stuff with it where we can sort of create color schemes really easily. <laughs> uh, so here's an example where I've used color mix, where I have a brand color that I'm never going to change, but I did a primary base, a surface base and a text base. The primary base is like this blue color that I have. The surface base is my background color and the text base is my text color obviously. And then what I'm doing here is you can see I have my brand muted where I'm mixing the brand color with my surface color because if it's if I have a brand color and it's on a surface which is the background, if I mix it it's going to mute it, it's going to bring it closer to my background and I'm just doing an 80% of my brand and adding that 20% there. And because my text is always high contrast on top of my background, if I mix it with that, it's going to make the color a little bit darker. It's not really more vivid. That's a bit of a lie, I guess. Um, but sort of maybe darker would be a better word. Uh, and then I've done the same for my primary color, a muted version of that, and my surface, a muted version of that, and a text muted version of that. Uh, but then what we can do here, I've did it with prefers color scheme where I can just sort of, if I only change my surface and I only change my base, that's going to change all the colors, but I didn't only want to do it with that. <laughs> so what I actually did is, um, I used a color picker here at the top where we can change the theme, where I can change my primary base, my surface base, and my text base. And because I'm only changing those base values, everything else will just adapt automatically. It does take a little bit more work. I think if you wanted a proper color scheme, um, just because I think some of the contrast ratios on here are probably a little bit too low and this the brand color not changing looks terrible on pink. Uh, but you can see just by changing those values, I can go through and I can have like wildly different color schemes going on where my muted colors, my paragraphs are all with my more muted version. Um, this is my text base color. These are all my text base colors. So like everything just adapts based on these base colors and all my muted versions and the more the darker versions or the vivid versions of it can adapt as well. So a bit of a fun way that we can sort of create a color scheme like that. There's other approaches you could do here. And again, you'd want to do some extra checking and you probably need to fine tune things a little more. I did a very simple example here, but I just wanted to show that how we can sort of take advantage of this in different ways in creating different color schemes. And even if it's just you're giving yourself different like lighter or darker versions that you want to work with instead of having something that's more dynamic like this. Um, cause again, I, I don't know if this would be, you'd have to do a lot of testing to make sure across your different color schemes that you're hitting the right contrast ratios, uh, and, and stuff like that. But I think it's a bit of a fun use case and something that I, I actually plan on exploring a lot more. If you'd like more content on CSS color stuff, like looking at LCH or looking at how we can use these different color modes in the gradients and stuff like that, please leave a comments down below and let me know what you'd like to explore. Uh, if you have any additional insights or anything like that, also leave comments down below and let me know, uh, you know, if you know what the, the difference between the decreasing and the shorter is, for example. If you're just looking at sort of simplifying your color schemes too, and you're doing a little bit of your own work and you have trouble with color schemes on websites, I have a video that is right here for your viewing pleasure that could really help you out on like the simplest way to make a nice color scheme when you don't have like a pre a design that you're working from, you're trying to do a bit of a personal project or your own thing that should help you out. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Johnny T. Tim, Simon, Michael, Enrico, James, Andrew, and TTLLD, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.